let's continue and go to the third movement, which is ward off left. The feet are shoulder width apart. At this point, we've just come down from the beginning movement, and we shift the weight to the left, pivot on the right heel. The right arm lifts, the left arm comes under, and shift the weight to the right. Let the left heel rise up, and then just let it slip out very gently, so that the foot moves in a straight line forward. And then sink into the left leg, the right hand hides behind the left, pivot on the rear heel, the left hand is in front, about a foot away from the body, the right hand comes to the side. If I do that from the rear, shift to the left, pivot on the right heel, right hand on top, left hand under, and shift to the right. Pick up the left heel, let it slip out from under, sink into the left, pivot on the right heel, and turn to the front. In order off left, there are several lessons being taught. And one is to be able to spiral the movements. Spiral the movements up from the bottom. What this means is here, I'm sinking into the left leg and turning. So I'm creating this type of lifting, just like a barber shop pole. The stripes going up like this. We're creating this spiraling down, spiraling up. And that's going to be very important in the self-defense. In order to move in between the other person's punches and kicks. And also, uh, just for health purposes, to be able to get all the joints to loosen up. Especially in the backbone. So here again, we, as we sink down and turn, you notice that all of the joints of the spine and of the body turn sequentially. Each joint of the spine turns one after the other, and that might take a lot of work to practice. Generally, we, we turn the whole spine together as one unit. There's no movement within the spine. Or sometimes there's a, a lot of movement in a couple of joints, and there's not much movement in a few of the other joints. So you have several vertebrae uh, fused together almost for practical purposes and several that do move. What we want to try to do here is turn first from the bottom and leave the top behind a little bit. So you notice the bottom is turning and moving and the top is being left behind. Now turn the middle but again the very top is being left behind so you just kind of turning at the solar plexus, and then finally the rest of the body turns, including the head and neck. So as much as possible, if you can get each vertebrate to turn a little bit, one after the other, in sequence, this is what we're going to be doing throughout the whole form. And you can practice that separately as an exercise. So let's do this ward off left again. We're standing with the feet shoulder width apart. Shift and sink into the left leg and then turn, pivoting on the right heel. The right hand on top, the left hand under. And then shift to the right, sinking into the right leg. Lifting the left heel. And then letting the left heel slip out from under. Sinking into the left. Right hand hides behind the left. When your weight is about 50-50, Pivot on the rear heel, shift another 20% into the front, so it's 70, 30. The front toe points straight, the rear toe points at a 45 degree angle. The feet are shoulder width apart, and shoulder width from front to back. The left arm is hanging, it's as if somebody's holding it from the wrist. The upper arm is slanted down, the lower arm is slanting down, so both arms are pointing down and the wrist is bent and relaxed so that the fingers are also pointing down at a little angle so everything is very relaxed and of course the right arm is relaxed but it's not dead there's some energy in the right arm as well okay now as you shift 
into the leg, there are some very important principles to keep in mind. In this movement, I'm going to step, and then as I sink into the left leg, I want to sink my weight, the weight of the body, into the inner thigh of the left leg, not to the outside. If I were to sink into the outside of the left leg, it would look like this. See how I'm tilting that way? And then when I turn in, I'll be like this. So what I want to do is to sink into the center of the arch that's supporting the whole body. My legs are an arch, whether I'm in this position, this position, any position I'm in, the leg should form an arch. So uh, the strength of an arch is that the weight is directed to the inside of the arch. In any building that's built with arches, if the weight of the building starts moving to the outside of the arch, the whole building will collapse, and that has happened in the past. So you want to make sure that when you're sinking, the weight of the body actually moves towards the inside of the front leg. And then when you're coming up, you're pivoting on the back heel and moving up, you're pressing up, or pressing the leg into the ground and moving the body up from the inside of that leg as well. So you're sinking into it, moving up from it, in and up. Now I'm going to use the term pressing up quite a bit. What that means is that after you sink the weight into a leg, and you just drop and let the weight just slide right into the front leg. At that point, you're going to actually press the foot into the ground. The result of pressing the leg and the foot into the ground is that the rest of the body bounces up. So it's as if you're stepping on a, a ball, a beach ball, and the pressure bounces you back up. Or stepping on a rubber mat and you feel that springing feeling. The leg should be springs so that as you move in them, they spring up and down and they hold the uh, force of the sinking weight of the body in a spring-like way to be released whenever you need them to be released. The releasing of the spring is what gives you power and you breathe in at that moment. The uh, compression of the spring, when you're sinking your weight in, you're breathing out. <sighs> and then breathing back in again. So these are some basic principles. And I'm going to talk a lot about principles um, just so that you understand what this is all about, what's behind it, the intricacy of, of the form, and what it's supposed to teach people as far as health and as far as self-defense. Now the springing, the springing action takes place as uh, we strike with a punch or a kick we're springing that punch out, just like a bow and arrow. Now you know with a bow and arrow that the strength of the arrow comes from the bow. You're pulling that string back, and there's where you're storing force. When you're sending the force out, it's actually a relaxation, a release. You're letting go of the string, and the arrow shoots out. The arrow doesn't create the force. The arrow transmits the force that's stored in the bow. So when we're punching, we're pressing that leg into the ground even more and releasing the arm uh, to strike. And so it's a different, maybe a different concept from hard styles if you've ever been involved in hard styles. And the hard styles, they compress and tighten and breathe out. When we compress, we also breathe out. But when we're compressing, well, the action that's taking place is that we're absorbing the other person's force into us and then into the ground, we're neutralizing that force. When we're trying to strike, we're trying to send energy out of our bodies into the other person, and you'll see this on other tapes uh, as we actually practice this, the fighting. Uh, we're sending energy into the other person. We don't want to compress and tighten as we strike. This is going to give you another principle of the form which will become very important as we go along. The internal energy that's flowing through our bodies can only move through yin areas of the body. 
It cannot move through yang areas of the body. So our, our energy, our yang energy, force, forcefulness of the energy, can only move through yin areas. What this means is that if the arm is relaxed as it's punching, the internal energy can flow through it. If you tighten, nothing's going to flow through it. And then you're using your arm more as a battering ram to hit the other person. In that case, you can only cause an effect on the surface of the other person. Uh, you can't really penetrate with the energy going inside. But for health purposes, it's also very important because when we want to become fluid and loose, and even if we're 90 years old, to be able to just move around in a fluid and loose way, the more we tighten up, like we tighten up our backs like this, then energy can't flow through the back and we wind up walking around this way. If we relax the back, seeing now how energy can flow through it, it, we can just move everything through the back. Once we tighten it up, we can't move very well. We certainly can't do the form very well. So anytime you're stiff, if you just conceive the idea that yang energy can only move through yin areas of the body. So any area that you want energy flowing through has to soften up and be relaxed. And that will give you an idea of, uh, of how to have energy flow through the body. Okay, now let's do the first three movements together. I'm gonna face this way so you can follow. The feet are close together with the toes pointing to the corners. Relax the body. You're gonna shift to the right, breathing in and sink the body, step, breathing out. Turn to the left corner, breathing in, and sink the body to the center, breathing out. The arms lift, breathing in, the palms straighten out, and sink, the arms come in. Breathe in, the palms come up, flowing up, and sink into the legs, the palms drop, and breathing out. Shift to the left, expand, breathing in as you pivot on the right heel, right hand on top, and sink the body into the right. Step straight with the left heel, very small step. Shift to the left, we're still breathing out here, and now breathe in as you pivot on the back heel. So I'm gonna go now to the next movement, ward off right. Return to the left, the right hand comes under the left hand, both palms are facing each other, and then drop the right knee and pick up the back heel. The right knee moves towards this left front corner. Pivot on the right toe. When your knee passes this corner, then turn your hips and step with the right heel a little bit over to the right, a couple of inches to the right. Shift the weight into the right, the right arm comes up, and pivot on the back heel and turn. The left fingers point to the right wrist. The right arm is in a circle around to the front of the body. The front, the right hand is in front of the center of the body and about a foot in front of it. Okay, now we relax. Let's go through that once more and then I'm going to talk about this movement. Feet close together, shift to the right, step with the left foot, shift and turn to the left, almost all the way to the left, and then back to the center. Flow up, the arms float forward, and now sink, the arms come back, float up, palms come up, and then sink into both legs. Shift to the left, pivot on the right heel, the right hand on top, the left hand under, and shift to the right. A very small step with the left heel. Shift to the left, press up with the left leg, pivot on the back heel. Turn to the left, the right hand comes under, palm facing palm, bring in the right knee, pivot on the right toe, step a little bit to the right with the right heel. Shift to the right, the right arm comes up and pivot on the back heel. 
Now you're facing the side. Thank you.